as the title of the video implies, this is about creating your very own AQL custom functions. I think that in my estimate less than 1% of the users of Curita will ever need to do this, but just in the spirit of having a more complete video library about Curita, I'm including this one. What's an AQL custom function? An example is this one over here. So this one actually converts a payload into hex and then checks for this hex character. This is the case of the log4j uh, detection that I will use as an example here. This one is actually included in several Curita packages and in most cases you don't import any custom AQL. This typically comes on a package that you go into the app exchange and when you download the zip file it contains this but you can actually have a zip file uh, exported with a CMT that only contains the particular custom function. The one that I'm going to be doing the example in this video is uh, this one. It's exploit detect. You see the double column that's the way you identify a custom function with that, that, that adjacent custom column uh, in there, right? Now, a couple of things to make life easier for those. And, and if you are doing this, you, you know how to program, you know how to do JavaScript, so you are a programmer. So I'm going to be light on many of the things that I will be covered. But the documentation is actually fairly good. If you search in, in, in your search engine for custom, or curator custom AQL, you're going to find this page. There are two important links that I will be referring to about here, these two, the, the fields and the utilities. So I encourage you to read this documentation but the way that you create, well, first of all, why did uh, the gentleman who created this one, uh, an engineer from the UK, Mitchell Hale, did this? Well, because he wanted to detect obfuscation cases in the payload for log4j, the log4j type of uh, vulnerability exploitation. Now, the when you create this is that you need to create an XML who has this structure, more on the fields later, that are well documented in here. And then your JavaScript will be here. Right? In the video description of this and all my videos, there is a link to a public box folder. In the log4j folder of that one, you'll find this notes document. I mentioned that because in here you can find the link to go to Mitchell Hale GitHub to get even more information than the one I'm providing here. And of course in his GitHub he puts his uh, zip file. And when you expand that zip file you actually see what I was describing before. This is the code you see between the beginning of the script and here is actually a very complex code and, and more on that later. And the end of the script, even this is even bigger until here. This is his JavaScript for detecting different levels of obfuscation on the log4j attack. Your your exam your your case may, may be completely different from this one. This is a good, uh, the idea is to save you a little bit of time and struggle when doing such an advanced topic. Going back to the notes document, what Mitchell Hell did is actually, he took the logic for detection of the log4j attack from another, from another gentleman named Florian Roth and in, this is a github for Florian and what he did is he 
here he showed the code he did for detecting this, but it was a completely, it was not in the context of Curator. This was, you know, sending some data to a server and the code was written in Python. So Mitchell actually converted or translated the Python code into JavaScript in order to be able to do this. Going back to what Mitchell did, we can see several things that might be useful. One is that there are two type of characters that in order for you to input them in JavaScript, you need to precede it for something different. Those are the ampersand character as well as the less than. We can see here that because you cannot put the less than character, you need to precede that by the by that symbol and the LT is a less than. And here we see the same case for the ampersand. How you invoke the custom functions and what parameters you pass to it are expressed on these parameters that are in here. So notice that his namespace is exploit detect and the actual name is log 4 j And that's what if we go to the notes here and we see how we call it, notice that this is the exploit detect, the double column and the log 4 j And here are the parameters and what, what it returns and, and all that is very well described. In here, this is an example of the concatenation of two. I think this is a much simpler example. I think his is actually better, but all these things help. And these are the description of those fields that you pass, right? The return type, and you can actually see all that description, and that will vary for your program. He also used other AQL custom functions that exist in the Curator product. And you can identify that in his code, anything that is preceded by util. Let's actually go back there and see if we can spot some of it. Let's go to his example, and I, I just expanded a zip file that is in his uh, uh, GitHub to see the content of this. Let's actually search for util. And here we can see that he used, for example, the base64 decoding that exists in AQL. And I think this is important to be mentioned because you don't want to implement in code what the tool already provides to you. And many of these things are really revolves around the way Curator operates. So it will be probably very hard for you to do it with your very own code. So there's plenty of uh, util functions that you can leverage. So keep that in mind when you write your custom AQL function. Other consideration that I think will save you time and grief are, of course, don't do this in a production system get a test system, get a Curator CE or some sort of a Curator system where you test this. Uh, because if you don't get your code right and you get into an infinite loop or you you know do things wrong, then you may impact the performance of your system. And, and then uh, in order to cancel this, you may need to reinitiate some processes and that's not something you want to do in a production system. Also, the way you get the debugging of this is by going into curator.error the var curator.error uh, log standard logs into curator so every time you run it you're going to see if there is a problem you're going to see it there so it's not as straightforward as if you were testing a python script or, or, or even a javascript for that matter uh, directly and if you plan to include this aql function into some curator rules, then the consideration around performance needs to be double check even more. Because you don't want to impact the overall, you don't want to make the evaluation of that rule computationally expensive. I noticed that I forgot to mention that the reason why Florian Roth and then Mitchell uh, went into all this trouble was because detecting the obfuscation that the bad guys are doing with plain regex is not really feasible. 
it will be too complex and, and computationally inefficient and that's why they went through this uh, in this case so uh, if you are planning on doing something that the tool doesn't do uh, out of the box something very specific to the job you are doing maybe writing a custom AQL function is the way to go again very few if you reach to this point it's probably because you are in among the one percent of all the curator users who may think they may need this uh, and I hope that this video helps you a bit into get you getting you into the right path keep in mind those githubs of this gentleman particularly the the Mitchell Hale and thanks Mitchell for uh, doing this because I think that he paved the way for others to come